Hello, I'm a sustainability specialist with the city of Chula Vista. That means that for the last 10 years, I've been lucky enough to help residents save energy and water in their homes and help the city adopt and implement climate action plans. But I'm also here speaking to you personally as a resident and citizen concerned about climate change. And climate change can be a complex and difficult issue, but at a simple level, it's when people do activities that release pollution from fossil fuels, like when we drive with gasoline or diesel, or when we use coal or natural gas to provide energy for our homes. And that pollution, collectively called greenhouse gas emissions, it goes up into the atmosphere, where it can have a number of impacts, but a main one is changing the climate or weather. It generally tends to make things warmer, but because our Earth and climate systems are so complex, it can have different impacts in different locations. For now, let's just focus on the warming to see why this is such an important issue. Globally, 2016 was the warmest year in NASA's 136-year direct measurement record. And nine of the top 10 warmest years have happened since 2005 or later. It's getting warmer. But this is what scientists are able to directly measure. They can also take those measurements, put them in models that help forecast what would happen if we don't make changes. And those forecasts also show increases. Globally, we could see a five degree increase in average temperature by 2100. But that's a global average. We know different locations will be affected differently. Here in the San Diego area, we could see that five degree increase as soon as 2050. And if five degrees doesn't seem like a big increase, it's important to keep in mind the largest change we've previously seen in our direct measurement record is about half of a degree. And just as San Diego warms quicker than the global average, sometimes in locations like heat waves will be much warmer than the average. Five degrees would bring a lot of impacts. Impacts like up to 144 million people forced to migrate away from their homes, or a 77% increase in the size of California wildfires. Here in Chula Vista, we could see our extreme heat days increase from two to 15. This could have serious impacts on the more vulnerable residents in our community, like those with respiratory issues or who have trouble getting to cool zones, let alone the many plant and animal communities that really have trouble getting to cool zones or getting to that ice flow if they're a polar bear. These impacts are affecting us now, today, but the greenhouse gas emissions, they can stay in the atmosphere for hundreds of years, also impacting future generations. If some of the scenarios come true, I could see the namesake glacier in Glacier National Park disappear, melt away. But my nephew, who is three, he could have to watch the largest glacier in the lower 49 states disappear. That's a lot worse than just losing your namesake. Just as we preserve social institutions for the next generation, we also have to preserve environmental institutions for the next generation. Something that helped shape my thoughts on this responsibility or when I was younger and Boy Scouts, or now just Scouts. Yeah, I remember the fun I had hiking with friends, going to the archery range, but I also remember the responsibilities that we had. At the end of every camp trip, we'd get in a long line, walk through the campsite to pick up any trash that we might find. It was a chore, but I had my friends with me, and that made it fun, seeing who could pick up the most pieces of trash. We knew we had the responsibility of leaving a cleaner campsite than the one we were given. And I feel very strongly about doing the same for our larger environment, our global campground. Some of the statistics that you heard today might have surprised you, and they are shocking. But people have known about the general risk and trends of climate change for a while now, and there's a lot of people working really hard to advert them. Here at the city, we adopted our first climate action plan in 2000. Last year, we adopted our fourth, we keep looking for new ways to save emissions. Our city leaders attended the Paris Climate Conference to lobby for global action, just as they attended the Kyoto Conference 20 years ago. And the state is working on its own solutions. Policies that support clean energy jobs, save billions of dollars, and pioneer new emission reduction technology and programs. They have a lot of accomplishments under their belt. And they might not be the quickest to react, but we cannot overlook the work the federal government has played in providing climate solutions through efforts like sweeping, sweep, through sweeping efforts like setting energy efficiency standards or pioneering new groundbreaking research at national laboratories or the Energy Star program, which has saved Americans $450 billion since 1992. That's billions with a B, that's a lot of savings. And these impacts are starting to show effect. Here at the city, 
we've reduced emissions from municipal operations 50% below 1990 levels. And our community just participated in the Georgetown University Energy Prize and received the award of first in overall energy score. What that means is that over the two years of the competition period, we were able to save more energy than any of the other 50 small and medium-sized cities around the nation. And there was tough competition. We are proud of that award. The state has been reducing emissions since 2007. And at a countrywide level, our emissions in 2016 were 12% below 2005 levels. These are great things to be sure, but they are only the start of a long journey. As a community, Chula Vista's emissions have increased since 2005. And after plateauing for three years, global emissions in 2017 increased by one and a half percent. This will impact the, the environment future generations inherit. How much will we collectively tip the scales against them? People look around and they see the federal government backing away from its leadership role in climate change or billions already invested in fossil fuel infrastructure. It's understandable if they could be a little bit confused about what their role is in this. They're getting mixed signals. But if we can provide them the right engagements from their community that show the value of taking climate action, we can help tip the scales for future generations. The city is working hard to reduce emissions, but we know unless we can empower our residents and businesses, we won't reach our goals. And that's our challenge. How can we connect and engage to not only encourage action, but tap into residents and businesses' individual skill sets and knowledge base to allow them to naturally do their own encouraging. One way we hope to address this is through something we already tend to like to do already, play a game. And not just play, but play to make an impact. This is called gamification, but with a new outcome. The goal is still the same. We want to win. We want to put our name on that high scoreboard, hear who else remembers having that title at an arcade or amongst a group of friends. It feels good, right? That's what we want to provide for climate action. Working with a software provider, we're currently designing a website that will allow users to create a profile, learn about climate action, and get points for taking that action. Actions can range from small things like unplugging unused appliances or larger things like driving an electric car. As the, as the individuals complete actions, they get points for those actions. And those points are totaled on individual and group leaderboards. And social scientists tell us that information can be a big motivator for our own actions. As we see friends, family, and neighbors taking action, we're more likely to evaluate actions ourselves. Now to be clear, no one's gonna buy an electric car just to get some points. <laughs> and no matter how much I wish they would. <laughs> they want an electric car because they drive great, reduce pollution, and they're cheaper to operate. The solutions have to solve their own problems and they have to deliver. But with the right engagement and the right information, we hope to empower residents to take advantage of solutions that are here today. And we know that engagement is key. Right now, we're currently working to build this network up within our own community, connecting resident to resident, neighborhood to neighborhood. Who here thinks their neighborhood would be in the leaderboard? I think there'd be some tough competition. But if we look at the global nature of climate change, we can see how valuable this type of game would be. If we were able to connect our residents with residents of another state, our entire state competing with another state, country competing with country, we could have billions of people taking actions to improve their quality of life, clean the environment, and push back a global disaster. That's how we can all win. We still need to provide the information resources that we have provided, but we also need to tap into people's basic instincts of play and community to bring up the fun and social nature of these solutions. It should be fun to do the right thing. And we know those connections, that engagement, that's key for what the next, in, next generation will inherit with the environment. That will help determine if my nephew is able to take his kids to see a glacier in the lower 49 states or not. And as I mentioned, it's a long road, but I know our communities are capable of amazing things. And I hope you'll join me on this journey of climate action. Thank you very much.